Hey everyone, Kushi Shah here with beautiful Josh Renwin. And we're talking about, I feel, is a very important topic for sanity. And I guess it's come up a lot as well in conversation regarding sleep. Is it existed for parents? Like, what is sleep? Do we remember what sleep is? <laughs> so, yeah, so we have a son, Isha, that's one and a half years old now. A little bit more, and yeah, just the different stages we've gone through with his sleep, which has been such a blessing for our sanity and how we feel about it. So, if you want to talk about, we can start off with the baby stage and what we started training with, like with the song, etc., and then we can move on to different stages. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Well, we like what, what so starting off when he's just was newborn. Mm-hmm. You didn't really do any sleep training, right? Like, you yeah. just go with the flow, <laughs> hang in there. Yeah, it's breastfeeding. <laughs> Keep rough, it <laughs> rough few, few months. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and then once things kind of more start to settle and they're sleeping a little bit longer, it's um, kind of conditioning uh, to the environment and, like, what uh, the bedtime uh, bed and sleep is so we started by singing a song to have a association with sleep time and the sound so I guess the more associations we could build into um, the sleep you know having the same same placement uh, for sleep having the same sound before sleep kind of all these cues kind of um, build a habit so that the child starts to understand that that is time for sleep so at at the simplest uh form we started singing a a same the same song uh and putting him in the same room yeah exactly it was just amazing that the minute the song came on he was aware like oh okay it's time for sleep and like cuddle in closer it's just the muscle memory right it's like it was just amazing and then from there, moving on to basically when we trans- transitioned him into the cot, the room next to our door, and just, yeah, location, routine. Right? I feel yeah, so we're yeah. building habits from the get-go, right? So we're all creatures of habit. So with our children, it's the same. So if we start setting that nice foundation up from day one and start building those habits in so having you know um for us bath time or something similar before bed so having the same the same thing before and then having that same kind of mm, intimate space right before for bed so uh for us it was the song again continued on and having um the cuddles like just cuddling for a moment and saying then reaffirming with our words that it's sleep time, bedtime, um, bed. So just using these words that are going to um, help that association uh, connect. Yeah. Anything more to add? So <laughs> no. So well, again, at this at this stage, it wasn't so much that like bedtime. Um, we had like a half hour window um, that would be ideal to try and uh, keep to um, and that would depend on his breastfeeding cycle and how he was waking up um, but we got it down pretty regularly that it was like between uh, 7 and 7.30 um, at night. Sometimes it would be um, more, sometimes less um, and you just play along with that. Sometimes when you're doing the cuddle and you're doing the song um, it would take, you know, you'd sing, we'd sing our song a few times um, over. Sometimes it was a later night and he would go down um, quicker. But the other things that, you know, we, we could have add to um, heightened it or increase the effectiveness was having like a, a similar essential oil, like a, a sleep smell too. So we had the sound, we had like the, the location, um, we turned off the light um if we added a a regular smell so all these things that we could add into it we had the same touch so we're touching on all his all his senses to let him know 
that this is to, like what what is to follow. So basically, they're involved in um, understanding what comes next. It's not a shock. It's not a surprise. So therefore, when you do put them down um, into the bed, into the cot, or wherever they they're sleeping, it it's not like a big startle and oh oh no and and uh, um, wake back up again and all all crying out and wanting um, that connection and wanting that that touch. But it was um, perseverance with it, like letting, <laughs> like uh, when he goes, when he was going down, um, just being really consistent with it. And even though he might want something else or um, starts to get a cue of what's going on um, and call out for certain things, just being flexible, like so... Um, sometimes he would uh, need a diaper change, like we just got, got him all ready, did everything else, but he still needed the diaper change. So he'd be vocalizing and communicating that. So it's not that it's going to be like every single time the exact same. It's just that you're following the similar pattern and you're being mindful of the situation. Sometimes need a little bit more, sometimes not so much, um, but we really want to engage with all the senses to make sure that they uh, understand what's coming next so it's not a shock, it's not a surprise. Yeah, because I feel like as parents we've become really hard on ourselves, like they're not robots, we're not robots, we have emotions, things coming up, so it's just that consistency like in the sense of bath relaxes them, so having that shower and then now that he's seeing his brothers brush teeth, so wanting to brush teeth and seeing us and then bed so it's kind of like you have this flow on and as they grow older storybook and then bed etc so yeah just that flow on and just if some days it is that it is more crazy in the sense of like if they're not feeling well it's taking longer more cuddles more etc it's fine it's like you change it according to how you, if they're not feeling well it's fine to take a detour right like we had to do it when he was his immunity was building it's yeah and then, too, when we were at other people's places, um, not having that same environment, then it's going to be a little bit different. And if we didn't have, like, the cot for the movement, so as they were younger, like, they can't really move out of the way. But say that you have you don't have a cot and you have a mattress on the ground or whatever, um, and they can start moving around. So need to be able to adapt and it was again coming back to that consistency all the time is that when they would when he, our son um called out and come out so as he's getting older and older still continuing the same process um except for now it's them testing that and just checking with you that that is you know what you're going to do um, they know what it is. He's often like, you know, he gets into the no and no, no bed and <laughs> wants to do everything else and try and distract, <laughs> try and, you know, turn our attention away from um, that next step in that bedtime routine. Uh, and then when he wanting to come out or um, leave that routine in some way, it's just reassuring them. So the first time, it's just basically, again, very simply that no, it's bedtime go again, give him that space, maybe like, you know, just needed that extra little bit of cuddles. A lot of the time it was maybe, you know, another minute or two of, of cuddles. So just sing the song, sing our song um, again one or two times. Um, so just not rushing it. Um, and then after that, if it's still going on, um, you don't want to continue to do it because you've already done it. And that then reinforces that coming out of bed or changing it up you, um, gives some other um, leeway or like another another activity uh, for them to stop going to bed because at the end of the day they don't necessarily want to go to bed at that time at, for whatever reason um, so not engaging with that so first time was you know we kind of mimic again just re redo it give it space second time not so much now now we're just kind of verbally kind of doing it give a quick one down no, next time not really verbally anything just maybe comfort where they are um and so you kind of wean off each time that they do it you're, you're slowly just less responsive less responsive to the point where it's basically just nothing just being being in the room with them 
so that they understand that they're not alone, that, you know, they're safe, that all is well, um, and just not like really acknowledging and going into that uh, with them. Let them let them uh, kind of vocalize and uh, do what they need to to do. And one of the other things that our son would do is we would put him down and he would like kind of hang on to your neck and kind of uh, try and climb up <laughs> onto you. And in that situation, it was just being there with him, um, keeping him from climbing up on me. I'd just kind of back off from the, the cot a little bit so that he wasn't able to do that. I'd have go down. I'd have that touch on him, um, just that reassurance. So I was still there. Um, I didn't need to really be looking at him or anything like that. I was there. I was uh, touching him. Uh, so just giving him comfort in situ where he is um, instead of like stepping away. So I'm still building up that connection, still reinforcing that he's safe, that, you know, it's just it's sleep time, um, bedtime. Uh, and that way, not trying to create any unnecessary anxiety around going to sleep and bedtime. It should be a beautiful kind of, you know, resting and, and, and waking up and all the rest of it uh, should be as peaceful and as calm as possible. So really downplaying any kind of anxiety. So for one is us not getting all nervous. Like we talk and we have words that we can communicate with. We <laughs> And um, babies kind of call cry cry out and it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as if we're crying um it's what they're doing that they don't don't necessarily want to be there but um at the end of the day wanting and needing and you know that's that's for us to create those healthy habits from the get-go and so if we've created those healthy habits um it just becomes so much easier so we've then been able to run uh, through that and have a really good sleep training with Ishwa um, until now where we're into the next phase where he can easily get out of the cot and he can easily open the door. So now he has, the, it's not just about sitting with him and being there with him and just being firm and kind of uh, letting him know he he's going to follow you around. <laughs> he's going to go where you go. So that now adds a uh, new dimension to, to sleep training. So he knows what it is. He's, he understands sleep um, training. But as any strong, healthy <laughs> immune system will do, it will push back, right? It will push back against unknown um, elements or um, anything that is known that they know that don't want to be there. Well, Ishwa knows that at bedtime, he maybe wants to prefer to play. He, he wants to do some other activity. Uh, so he's coming out now. And what I have been able to do is just stand at the door, um, <laughs> acknowledging that he has come out and just like, yep, bed. For, so doing the same steps as before, weaning off that acknowledgement, but he's older now. He doesn't need that same um, full intensity um, of like, you know, touch and, and words and all the rest of it, another song. Uh, so now it's more uh, once the door shut, may go in and check just to make sure that, you know, um, nappy's all good, that they have, nothing is. But once everything has been all checked out and everything is all fine, then just outside of the door and I'm just holding the door handle and he's coming out the other door and he'll try for a little bit, maybe a couple minutes, but then he realizes he can't do it. There's no point and he'll, he'll go down and, and fall asleep. And then, you know, I can come in and put him back into his, his bed. Um, if that hasn't been the case so we're waking up during the night now that he's weaned um off and he wakes up in the night wanting um breastfeeding so that's his habit so habit is he doesn't need um night feeds anymore but he has a habit of waking up then for cuddles and skin to skin because that initial breastfeeding right next to him so it's kind of like he's wanting that touch so yeah, coming at different hours for cuddles mm -hmm. and just saying still sleep. So, what, like five o'clock in the morning, kind of coming next to us, 
and just patting him and he just like lays to sleep so that was another one that we did is like the patting on his back like the gentle patting it's like okay then it's sleep time kind of um the physical assurance yeah, yeah. so then when he comes now in is that we've just got a way that um, we can prevent him from coming into to the room because um, none of our rooms have locks on them uh, so we just got a couple of weighty items on the other side that just prevents him from doing it I guess if he really really tries he'll be able to do it but the thing is is that you just got to be able to out sustain the will of your child and the longer this training goes on or this kind of habit building goes on, the harder it is. Just imagine yourself of habits that you've had for decades or even a year or two years. And um, once that habit is in your neurology, you know, your, um, your, your body, uh, that's the path of least resistance for you. So you follow that, that path. And so with them is not getting it to the point where they have this really strong connection that that's what they got to do. So if you start this early on, it's simple. And at first it takes about like 15, 20 minutes and then it gets really, really easy. Then another phase will come in and that'll then be, you know, another 10, 15 minutes and then another phase will come in and that'll be like, you know, five, 10 minutes, but we're being super consistent. Um, we're not giving him that attention. We are letting him then go up against the door, try for a little bit. He understands after a couple minutes that he can't can't do it. So when he's had success and he's got in, well then expect the next time he's going to try a little bit harder and a little bit longer. But if you're really consistent and he doesn't have success, well the next time he's not going to have the same amount of will. So for example, if he came and he tried for a couple of minutes and he was successful, the next time he would come. So being successful being that he got attention, he got out of that situation because that's what he's trying to do. Then the next time would maybe he would have the will to try for three to four minutes. If he was unsuccessful, however, maybe he would next time come and he would have the will to try for a minute. And so then you can see how very, very quickly over the course of just a couple of nights, um, you can keep shifting and changing uh, that direction. So, you know, half a week, a week max because we've been able to start it um, from a young age. So if it's then older age, then they've got more understanding of words and you've got that ability to reassure in your words as well. But you have to follow through with what you say. You have to be consistent and you have to let them know that it's like in terms of the environment and everything else not just like telling them that it's they're safe and that they're loved and all that but it actually has got to be a nice safe you know inviting um place for them to be and once everything's all fine and and good then you got no worries you know they're safe you know that them calling out or doing anything is um, them wanting to change that situation up and you are in the driver's seat of creating that healthy habit from day one of good sleep pattern from day one and that means that you will as well we will as parents start to get full night's sleep quicker um than if we we left it basically we're, we're starting off st straight off with good habits appropriate to the age yeah definitely like appropriate to the age and yeah consistency was like absolutely fundamental example when the boys were older every time they'd get out of bed put them back in bed and then all they just then stop doing because over time if you're consistent they know that they can't bend or change it right the minute you start getting lenient or like the lines get blurry then it's like, um, okay, what's happening here, right? Because then if you keep, example, three, four, five-year-old, if you don't want them in your bed, and then so if you keep, like, what well, we had, <laughs> we had to, basically we had two boys that were constantly, like, putting back in their bed because they had the habit of being in the bed, right? And then over time now, like, they don't do it. It took maybe a couple of months. Yeah, so our months, elder, yeah. our elder children, um so they didn't have the consistency of uh a nice reinforced sleep um routine at the beginning 
and they got into the habit of in that nighttime breastfeeding being connected and kind of slow co-sleeping um so their habit then when we were a like um putting them down to sleep is that they would be fine you're tucked in they'll go to sleep but they had that habit of waking up and coming in and that wasn't addressed at a young age so then we had it at three and a half and five and a half or so um having them come out both of them um coming out and wanting to come into uh our bed and so it was just taking them back every time that they did it it was just taking them back explaining to them that that's not how we can um you know that that's not going to happen anymore um it doesn't it's not doesn't mean anything in terms of uh not wanting to um, have that connection and touch we can definitely cuddle during the day and at other times but at that time being able to um, have a full night's rest for them because this is interrupting their whole night's sleep because they're they got this habit of waking up in the middle of the night and walking and coming into another bed and they're going to keep doing that until you give them the ability in terms of your habit training to sleep throughout the whole night and so they're also not going to be able to be getting the rest that they otherwise uh, could get as well so we explain that it's more about them it's not about us it's not about us not wanting it or anything so we we completely made sure that in our communication and our response to that it was completely child focused it was about what was good for them and it was creating good healthy habits for them and once those healthy habits were set once they understood and they could sleep through the night well now we can start to play around so I'm a big believer in kind of dealing with black and white it's easy to learn um from a perspective of complete contrast to start off with, you know, good, bad kind of mentality. And then once that is understood, mix in all the gray, mix in all the, you know, okay, tonight we can have a, a family sleepover. Hey, tonight we can do this we, and, and whatever else. Um, but at the beginning, it's com- so fundamental to, to just keep it consistent, um, no matter what age you're you're dealing with and explain it from the benefit to them and why it is for them Um, and if you can't do that with your training then you'd have to question why you're doing your training in the first place because if it's not for the benefit of them well then who's benefiting here if it's just benefiting yourself well really like um as parents we should be setting up our our children to be um, empowered and you know healthier adults not adults that have to then relive all our mistakes and all re go over all our habits that we've had to then work on if we can give them a much cleaner plate to start with then they can thrive off that and not have to redo our stuff they can do their own things (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. If you're working by yourself, having a very clear plan and vision of what you're doing, why you're doing it, etc. Because example, right, let's say if it's like they come out of their bed, come into your bed and you keep putting them back maybe just three times. Right. And then after the third time, you just give it and like, fine, just, you know, it's fine. Just come into bed. So then you're creating the pattern that cool. If I do it three times, right, then I can sleep in your bed. So you're actually reinforcing what you're not able to stay firm with. And that's why it's important for you to stay firm in the sense of they know where they stand uh, and you know where you stand. So they know that you're going to follow through. Because if you don't follow through, then it's like nobody knows what they're doing, right? It's like if you have this conversation to them, explaining them what's happening or if you're gradually doing it, it's about that clarity. And if you're not following through, then it's like, well, if I, example, negatively reinforcing screaming, right? The louder I scream, then everyone's looking at me and looking at mommy or daddy and I'm going to get what I want, right? So it's just, it's not reinforcing patterns that will create um, negative behaviors. So yeah, it's like there was not a day that we missed regarding or a moment that we missed when they came to our bed or close to our bed. Like, yep, yeah, so. Remember, we're going back to a bed. It's time for a sleep. So 
we just kept doing it and just that consistency that brought the results so it's you know you just pick and choose and you know how gymnastically kids are right they lay in like amazing positions like all of them will stand in one position at night time and you'll check in on them or in the morning or, or in different times and they're in completely different positions. So the sanity of sleep for the parents and the children is just, mm-hmm. yeah, otherwise you're in zombie mode, which is normal as in, in the beginning when they're having that first feed and the cluster feeds, etc. And then over time, it's like, yeah that touch like giving them the touch and reinforcement before bed and then we did morning cuddles so then like they'd wake up in the morning all excited to come into bed have a cuddle and like we'll have nights where we're just cuddling and uh, watching something or doing family nights so still reinforcing that touch and that coast like coastly things beautiful it's yeah it's just staging and where and why like um yeah because we coast flat for a bit for a while and just I know for me my brain and my ability to function on day to day then after you add more kids and responsibilities I was like I was going crazy and that's how Mm -hmm. we created this organically right like you started doing the song because we used to use it as a meditation song and then we started you started using it as a sleep song and then it was very intentional like so you're leading yeah, like as parents, you should be understanding what nutrition you're giving. You should be understanding the importance of sleep. How do you expect a baby, a toddler or any a child to be able to understand all these concepts and all these ideas that uh, you have at your fingertips? So you are leading. And like with any kind of social or pack kind of animal, um, if you're not a strong leader, then the pack is going to know about that and they're not going to follow. And so it's going to f- progressed through to everything else that you're doing too these same kind of concepts and these same kind of ideas can be played out at the dinner table can be played out when you're shopping can be played out going getting ready for school getting ready for events anything if you don't show the way forward with that healthy pattern with that consistency with the starting off with that black and white and moving through into then them kind of understanding the reasons behind all the different processes until they can actually engage and make those choices for themselves then you're setting them up for failure you need to be a strong leader definitely and like both parents being on the same page because it's not like you're playing one right and then the other one's doing the work and it's like it's just born for disaster the kids know that one's going to give in like example for some things that ask josh first for other things that ask me first it's they know your soft spots so in these things etc even in those moments then we've come together and we like hey I've noticed that da 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 is doing da 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 and coming to you to get this when I've told them no or, you know exam so communication as parents you need to communicate and be on the same page otherwise what one of you is doing the training and the other one's not and it's like mm-hmm. what are we doing here so yeah like enjoy your journey Set your goals, be on the same page, flow with it, be consistent. Consistency is key. So, yeah, have fun, enjoy your sleep. We're how all the boys are in bed, like, you know, it's amazing. Like, we've got more couple time and more just time to connect and be and do what we're passionate about. So, outside of parenting. Yes. (laughs) Enjoy and have a beautiful rest and a beautiful sleep. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you.